We're back with HealthZone. We've been talking about eating disorders, but as I mentioned before the break, we're shifting gears now. We're going to talk about a condition called BDD, body dysmorphic disorder. It may affect upwards of 1% of the population. My perception reading about it a bit is that it affects maybe men more than women, but I may be incorrect, and my guest may clue me in on that. So let me introduce him. His name is Ari Winograd. He is a licensed cognitive behavioral psychotherapist. He's also director of the Los Angeles Body Dysmorphic Disorder Clinic, which is a new clinic in Santa Monica. So I am very excited to have you on the show because I found this disorder intriguing. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, you know, it actually came up in our discussion on eating disorders. You wake up in the morning, you see that awful pimple in the middle of your face, mm -hmm. you suddenly look bloated because you're on your menstrual cycle, so you focus in on an imperfection, but then your day goes on. Mm -hmm. You know, you wash it off and you say, gotta get on with it. Right. My sense is with these individuals, mm -hmm. they're not able to do that. So let's talk about what is this malady? What is this disease? What is body dysmorphic disorder? Um, it's characterized as a preoccupation with either an imagined or very unnoticeable defect in appearance. Um, I describe BDD as an individual's inability to stop thinking about an area of their appearance which they consider defective, what they see as defective. So they become incessantly involved with Correct. this perceived or very small imperfection and it defines their life? Correct. It becomes what we call an obsession. Okay. The inability to stop thinking about their appearance. They want to stop, but they can't stop. It's an obsession. And what do you think the etiology of this is? No, we're not fully sure. We know that there's a genetic basis to BDD. We know it runs in families. Mm -hmm. We know it has to do with the molecule neurotransmitter, serotonin, in the brain. We also believe that environmental and familial cues play a role as well. But we definitely are seeing a biological genetic link in body dysmorphic disorder. But as of now, I don't think anyone knows for sure the etiology per se. And I think it would be interesting for viewers to have a sense of how many professionals out there are truly capable, truly understand this disorder in order to work with somebody who has them, even in order to identify it. Well, only a handful. The reason why it's not identified, until recently it was thought to be very rare. We think upwards of one to maybe two percent of the world's population has BDD. And the reason why, until recently, it's been misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed is individuals with BDD see themselves as a troll under the bridge, a monster, something's really distorted, something's really ugly about them, where you and I see them as normal, if not even good looking. So the problem is they end up at dermatologist or cosmetic surgeon's offices because to them, can't you see? I'm so ugly, I'm so deformed. Mm. So they don't go into mental health practitioners' offices because can't you see, this is about my appearance. So even if they do end up with a psychiatrist or a therapist, they usually go in for other reasons. I've had people who have been in therapy for years who have come to me and have never told their therapist that they hate how they look because they're way too ashamed. Huh, that's really, really interesting. So then, if you could give me a sense of what are the con they wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. what do you perceive might be the comments, and maybe they've shared the comments with you, mm -hmm. give me a string of consciousness. I get up, I have BDD, what am I thinking? So we have one of two things that can happen. This is a brain disorder. Ultimately, it's about thoughts about appearance. But many people with BDD get stuck in the mirror. I want to emphasize this is definitely not vanity. Okay. It is the antithesis of vanity. They check the mirror because they want to see Maybe this one time I don't look this deformed, or maybe this one time I'm not that ugly. So it's what we call a compulsion. They check, but they get stuck because they'll never see what they want to see. Another percentage, a smaller percentage of individuals with body dysmorphic disorder avoid all reflective surfaces because they feel they're so ugly, it just reinforces that concern. So they might get up. There's a lot of people who become housebound. A lot of people can't work. They're really defined by this academically, occupationally, intimately, socially, they can't function. There are people with BDD, maybe the milder version, that they function, but they can't stop thinking about how they look. They want to, but it's always on their mind. Is there a gender predisposition to this? And um, 
how significant might be suicidal ideation in a situation like this? I just, I, I got to tell you, mm. I, I mean, we all are bothered by our imperfections, but I can't mm. imagine the overwhelming emotion 24-7 that is guiding your life if this is how you're defining yourself. And, uh, so gender and suicidal. Well, I, I'm glad you asked that about gender. Body dysmorphic disorder is not merely a female disorder, and it's not a disorder of gay men. Okay. Research shows it's about 50% male and female. Um, I see many more heterosexual men with BDD than women, and often mm. those cases are much more severe cases. Mm. Why, I don't know. But I see more men with severe body dysmorphic disorder. Suicidal ideation is high. We think about 35% of people with BDD have suicidal ideation, wow. and they have the highest suicide attempt rate, as high as bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. That in itself defines how severe of a psychiatric disorder this is. It's not vanity, it's not a Los Angeles disorder, it's not self-consciousness. This is a, a really severe psychiatric disorder and we don't know how many people have really committed suicide and have never really been defined as this is because BDD maybe it was depression or another diagnosis, but we really don't know until now. This disorder is very high. Suicide attempt rate, suicidal ideation. Yeah, that, that really does sound high. Now, typically, is there an age where this might begin, even if they're not coming to you at that age? Mm. Are patients relaying to you, I remember around five, or I remember around puberty, or is, is there an age where they start to have a sense something is terribly awry in my life? Um, research seems to show that it often starts early teen years, adolescence. Um, from my fairly extensive experience working with BDD, many people have told me from early childhood, as early as three or four, they remember getting stuck in the mirror or not being able to stop thinking about how they look. So many people tell me as early as childhood, they just felt as if something about their appearance was deformed. I think it takes, I think um, a study showed it takes about nine years for BDD to be accurately diagnosed and treated. So in that time, a lot of people get multiple surgeries, suicide attempts, hospitalizations, misdiagnoses. So when they get treatment, um, if they do get treatment at all, often comes later in life. One reason I'm talking here is to bring attention to this disorder so some of the same people who might go get surgery might realize, wait a second, maybe this is about my brain. Maybe this isn't about my appearance. Risk factors. Are there risk factors for this disease? Suicide. Okay. Definitely. Suicide, um, life becoming completely dysfunctional, non-functional. And how about predisposition risk factors? Are there any things in the environment, in the community, in mm. the family that might lead you to think, ah, I see where this kid got set up for this? I think that an indiv individual probably needs to have a predisposition for what we call an obsessive compulsive spectrum disorder, which BDD is one of. Okay. Um, individuals who have been teased a lot might be more predisposed. Maybe a family that has an excessive emphasis on aesthetic appearance or maybe no emphasis at all. The extremes might be more predisposed. But I think usually a genetic predisposition needs to be there because a lot of teenagers, a lot of kids are mean and tease others but only about 1% of the world gets BDD. Okay. So it's numerous factors. And what about chemical dependency issues? Do these people tend to gravitate towards that to feel better? We find about 50% of individuals with BDD at one point in their um, disorder have issues with chemical dependency, drug abuse, substance abuse, alcohol abuse. Uh, we need, in, during treatment, they need to be sober prior to getting treatment because a lot of this is self-medication. So a lot of times they might end up in NAAA chemical dependency programs, okay. but it's actually BDD is the primary diagnosis. So talk to me about your clinic. What are you doing there? What treatment options do people have? The Los Angeles Body Dysmorphic Disorder Clinic is an outpatient treatment center. Uh, we have psychiatrists and we have therapists on staff. We all are experts and specialize in body dysmorphic disorder. And